What's up, bosses? A brand new sponsor I'm super excited for. Did you realize over one trillion, that's trillion with a T, dollars is managed by quantitative hedge funds worldwide? Instead of just picking stocks, these hedge funds use AI and quantum mathematics to take advantage of abnormal market movements. And the numbers don't lie. Did you realize if you just invested $10,000 into Renaissance Technologies Medallion fund in 1988, that same $10,000 would be worth over $200 million today. That is big boss money, over 10 times the return of the S&P. But unless you had an advanced engineering degree and even understood half the words I said in the last few sentences, quant investing has been off limits. That's where our sponsor comes in. It's composer.trade. I'm going to tell you all about how it works, what kind of tools they have to work to your advantage coming up in the break in the show. But if you want to get a sneak peek, head over to composer.trade slash boss. That's composer, C-O-M-P-O-S-E-R dot trade, T-R-A-D-E slash boss, B-O-S-S. I know it's a long one, but one more time, composer.trade slash boss. See important disclaimers at composer.trade slash disclaimer. All right, let's kick off this episode of Invest like a boss. Welcome to the Invest Like a Boss podcast. I'm Sam Marks. And I'm Johnny FD. We're self-made entrepreneurs who invest our own money and use modern technology to invest like a boss. Join us each week for exclusive interviews with our network of modern investors, business owners, and multimillionaires to discover new ways to invest our hard-earned cash. What is up, bosses? No, 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 no. That's, I tried to be like Derek, but it just doesn't sound right. <laughs> What's up, bosses? This is Sam here in Barcelona. This week, we're going to try something new. We're going to try a different episode format where I'm going to interview somebody in my network and also do a quick intro and outro solo. If you guys are new to the show, normally my co-hosts, Derek and Johnny, will join me on the intro or outro commentary. But we're going to play with some new types of formats and ideas coming up. So let's see how it turns out. We promised you guys a fun episode this week, and last week I was in Bordeaux for the On Premieres event, and it was awesome. I was invited by my friend Julian, who's been in the Bordeaux wine business for more than 25 years, and he's also helping me set up my private cellar. We're going to talk about the wild experience we had, more details about On Premieres, pricing, and Julian's cool wine trading business and new fund. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Hey, Julian. Hey, good morning, Sam. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> tired. Crazy, yeah, yeah. tired. Yeah, yeah. We had such an amazing time in in Bordeaux last week, but uh, yeah, like uh, being promoting uh, the wine in uh, London this week as well. So it's like lots of uh, wine dinners, parties. I love it. Oh. It's, uh, so you never, <laughs> you never stopped after on premieres and just kept going in a very busy city of London. I was like dying to get, <laughs> to get to a quiet place. Barcelona is not quiet, but it's a, it's better than London. Yeah. All right. It's uh. so what, what, what was your experience so far with, with me in Bordeaux? Did you, did you enjoy it? Oh my gosh, man. It was like, it was, it was like both the coolest experience of my life and also like one of the most horrific <laughs> yeah because of it because of that second or the first day after that dinner oh man well we, we should let's go into the detail on that actually because yes uh yeah let, let me come back to that so basically uh you understood that you came into bordeaux to taste the primer uh 2020 uh 2021 mm -hmm. which was the wine made last year that's all the professional uh in the one business taste after one year mm -hmm. and uh it allows everybody to taste the quality of the wine, and then on primers we'll be starting, I guess, in the, in, the, in the next two three weeks, where basically all the chateaus and I mean on the fine wines, I mean fine wines, will be released one after each other, and uh, all the merchants all over all over the world will get positions and uh, buy them on primer, and then the wine will be delivered in two years time. So that's uh, yeah. very specific, to, very specific to Bordeaux. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it works as well in Burgundy, but not exactly the same. But anyway, 
that's interesting for you to to discover uh, a wine which is uh, one year old <laughs> and uh, which is a uh, like uh, basically keep grain, keep keep aging in oak, and we be delivered. But so, what 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 was your experience about tasting wine uh, on the on the primer? <laughs> well, let's start first. Just we met in Bordeaux. Actually, going back uh, to how we originally met for the listeners. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. We we how went we met we met in Barcelona <laughs> actually through a yeah, last year exactly. through a mutual friend and this business forum called. Entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur organization that was kind of hosting like an informal dinner. And then I, and Julian was there and we were drinking wine. And I found out Julian was in the wine business and I, I had just started getting really interested in, in the wine. So I started to kind of like, and we started talking about like NFTs and technology and how that might evolve in the wine business. And I was like, I was like, well, but back up, like, how about just investing in wine and all this stuff? And it turned out like Julian is, is like the guy to know, from Bordeaux, that's actually got a good rim ring to it. You got to know from Bordeaux. Yeah, <laughs> and I had yeah. just gone. I think I had just gone to Bordeaux and like got turned away at most of the chateaus, like trying to walk into the Rothschilds and stuff. And they're like, "Who are you?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Just an American guy that wants to try some of your wines." Like, no chance, yeah. buddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like uh, when you stop being involved in fine wines, I mean wines, and uh, you, you develop your interest in tasting wine from different origin. It's, uh, it be, I mean, for all the wine lovers and people who are very much into it, 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 it's very addictive. Not for alcohol, but because, I mean, you know, you enter a world of, uh, of, uh, of flavors, you enter a world of, a true world, actually. I mean, you know, wine is like, it's an economy. It makes live people regionally in different places of the world. I mean, it's a cultural product as well, you know. So every every country has every wine region. And it's very different. I mean, everybody has a way to elaborate his own wine. And I think uh, it talks to people. And, uh, yeah, and it's a living product as well. So the older you keep the wine, I mean, sometimes it improves, sometimes not. It depends on the winemaking, depends on many things, but... It's very interesting. Uh, I mean, that's how I, I, I started, basically. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, my mom would take me, like, uh, in different places, and I was always smelling the atmosphere, like, uh, in the <laughs> house, and I, I could feel, like, the people, the kitchen, and I was I developed very early stage my 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 ability to taste wine, and, I mean, to, to smell, and then to taste, and then to eat, and... And yeah, when, when, when I understood that I, I would do business, uh, I said, okay, let's let's do wine because I would be able to talk about it and uh, develop my passion around that. So it's been 25 years now. Um, and uh, obviously, um, I mean, you evolve and uh, your, 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 your taste change. And today, I mean, I, I trade fine wines, of course. I trade the most expensive wines of the world because that's, that's where the money is. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I, I, I also enjoy my wine and like, uh, this is like uh, totally, you, 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 I need to make a decorrelation between what I enjoy do, do, drinking and uh, my business. My business is, is very much into like the most expensive wine of the world. And I mean, they are also very good, but I really enjoy drink, drinking like wine from everywhere. Um, of course, friends, uh, France, France and Italy developed like uh, to me uh, mm -hmm. like uh, essential fine wines. But now we produce wines all over the world, as you know that. Like in New yeah. Worlds, like uh, China, Chile. Um, yeah, so that's what we call the old world and the new world. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I could talk hours about uh, wines and so on. But uh, yeah, to come back to to come back to us, it's uh, interesting that you develop your your passion as well slowly but surely. Yeah. It happened quick. And I think it happened quickly with kind of moving to Europe and being sort of central in to a lot of good wine regions, namely Tuscany, Priorat, just south of Barcelona and uh, Bordeaux. Yeah. And I, I don't even, I don't even know where Burgundy is located on a map, but uh, that's, that's somewhere in, in the proximity. Uh, but speaking of, of Burgundy, like I had never tried Burgundy wines and then when I met you in Bordeaux for the first night, you took, took me out to a, a local shop that was owned by 
one of your buddies, right? Yeah, Arnaud. Yeah, yeah. Arnaud, we had, yeah, we, yeah. We went to L'Univers, which is uh, basically uh, the place in Bordeaux where you drink Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even know it was Arnold's shop until like the next day. So there was a couple of Julian's friends. They're both French and, um, and one of the guy's wives. So I think it was six of us, including yeah. Julian and I. We sat down, started having some food and and some wine Res- and a like Res- and, and, food, yeah yeah so before you knew it we we're like it's probably seven bottles deep which actually is not that bad across six five or six people but then there's of course this like the spirits that followed it but those yeah. wines were like yeah yeah i thought I've, I've had some really good wines before but there was especially those burgundy wines i was like i've never tasted yeah. a wine never tasted yeah. a wine like yeah. this never expected yeah. a wine to taste like this mm. It was pre rock my friend, 2009. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, Burgundy is, uh, Burgundy is, it, it's, it's an amazing. I mean, it's basically Burgundy wines uh, I made from Pinot Noir mm-hmm. when Bordeaux is a blend of uh, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon. And the wines are very pure. I mean, Burgundy is very, very small. I mean, in the world of fine wines, it's uh, like uh, 0.1% production. That's why people, I mean, Everybody wants to drink and, and purchase Burgundy because the wine is very rare and uh, it's very special. I guess when you when you get when when you when you turn forty, <laughs> that's my experience. Of it. But most of the people I know, you start with you you, you can start drinking like uh, Tuscan wines, Bordeaux wines. But when you get older, you appreciate the fact of having like uh, uh, wines which are like uh, not as heavy. You know, yeah. the, the blended the, the blend wines are are, are quite tough to, to to taste. I mean, like uh, to me, a, a great Bordeaux, you need 15, ten to fifteen years before you you can drink it. Otherwise, mm-hmm. it's very young, and it's very oaky, and uh, it's it's, uh, it's, it's the texture is very it's very deep. You know, mm-hmm. while Burgundy produce Pinot Noir, and the wine are um, are very much more on the fruit. You, you you can't keep them as long as you keep Bordeaux, but to me, it's easier to drink. Yeah. Yeah, I've started to notice the same for myself where I'm like all up until now, I was always like, Oh, I want the the really heavy cabs or Australian Shirazes are like 15, 16% alcohol. Cool. Super heavy. And I was like, this is just a great wine. But after having those burgundies, that that Pinot Noir in Burgundy, it tastes unlike any other type of Pinot Noir I've ever had. Like it you wouldn't even think it's by the same fruit or the same grape yeah. it was like so complex and so much going on i was just like i didn't even really know how to react to tasting a wine like that it, did, it was almost like its own category that especially that that unfiltered one we had what was that um the third was yeah that was this one that was uh <sighs> rock oh, nice. crazy. yeah that, that's it i mean you, you, we had a roumier fourier a prier rock uh, yeah we, uh, i mean of course, like uh, when you start drinking uh, uh, Burgundy wines at the best, it's very complicated to come back to Bordeaux. To me. That's yeah. my opinion. But I mean, they are very expensive as well. You know? So now that's, uh, that's it. It's like to get access to this kind of wine, either you bought it long time ago or uh, you're lucky enough uh, uh, to, be, uh, to, be, uh, to, to find them in a, yeah, at a decent price in a restaurant. But you know, that's, <laughs> so- uh, that's it. I think, so we had, I think we had six or seven bottles of wine. I think the average price was like somewhere around 500 euros. And then, yeah, and then yeah. after you brought out some spirits, yeah, that Chartreuse. was again, that was again, like it's, the most complex spirit and best tasting spirit yeah. I've ever had. I'm like, I didn't even know a spirit like this existed. Yeah. That's a, that's a spirit which is made in, uh, in the South France by uh, uh, monks <laughs> for, <laughs> for 12th. I mean, uh, yeah. Like still we, made by monks or in his, I mean, historically I, it was. Yeah, I mean historically, like uh, okay, I'm not very. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not very into this story, but I guess it's uh, it started uh, in um, in the 12th century. <laughs> so basically, it's called uh, la, les Conquêtes des Frères Bénédictins. So they produce this spirit, which is uh, made of a very specific plant that uh, you can find in uh, in, the, in the in the countryside right down there and. Um, and uh, to be able to produce uh, uh, this this liquor, it requires like uh, skills mm-hmm. in uh, how to how to how to uh, get the, the, the plants, how to dry them, how to make the alcohol out of it, 
I mean, it's 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 a, it's a knowledge, you know. They've been doing this for centuries, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why it's 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 very complex. It's it's amazingly good, yeah. And honestly, I truly encourage uh, our listeners today if they have the opportunity one day to taste it. I mean, it's very unique. But the, yeah. the, but it only well, what year was that made? It's like in the seventies or something, right? Um, uh, honestly, I, I would be honest, I, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, I mean, they start, they start produced in the 12th century. The one we had, I think, was maybe 71? 1971. How, yeah, much, was, how yeah. much does that bottle go for? But basically, uh, um, in the restaurants, you get, uh, uh, you get uh, just a glass of it, which is like uh, six or eight centiliters. And... Uh, it's uh, 150 euros per class. So, yeah. <laughs> so what's that? So a bottle would be like probably times 20, I mean, 30, yeah. 3,000 or something. Yeah. It's uh, roughly, I mean, today on the market, it's actually that three or 4,000 euros a bottle. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But, the, and the, but I, I tasted one of the younger ones. It was like from 2000 or something. It didn't taste nearly as good. Like it was a totally different taste. That's interesting because that day actually, you taste Mouton Rothschild 2001, mm-hmm. which uh, basically was not supposed to be a great vintage, but it turns out an amazing vintage. <laughs> Sometimes mm-hmm. it happens, you don't know why. Mm-hmm. And we taste Mouton Rothschild 2021, exactly 20 years later, Primer, <laughs> on the same day. So wow. you, get the same, you get the same wine but with 20 years gap, you know, and you understand the difference oh my gosh. Uh, between the, uh, a wine could age, you know, but yeah. Yeah. So that so that was pretty much night one. We, we I think we drank something like I don't know. I think probably total bills were like upwards of three or four thousand euros, <laughs> and it ended up with us all just drinking spirits at the and smoking yeah. cigarettes at the bar. And I, I don't, I never really drink or uh, smoke cigarettes. Actually, I never smoked cigarettes, but it was kind of one one of those one in France type of things. <laughs> Everyone else yeah. is doing You're it. In it's French, like, you drink wine, you smoke it, cigarettes. It, it yeah. could have been like that setting could have been. 300 years ago, you know, just classic exactly. little, little French mm-hmm. bar drinking yeah. old wines. <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> so then, yeah, so the, the next morning the, we had the world change. Yeah. Yeah. So the next morning was, was the on premieres day. So it was going to be a big day for us. We had to do, we we're going to Joan for tasting. And then a couple of the, the premier vintages uh, of sorry, yeah. chateaus. I woke up, I hit snooze every every five minutes for like an hour i was in a lot of pain and i don't know how it all how it all just like compounded but man that next morning was rough for me and yeah, um, but, uh, fortunately we had a driver right yeah yeah so we, we, we hired one like some like 17 year old kid that truly knew to be our driver for the day that was a lifesaver man he, he, he 18. was 18 yeah good yeah guy, good guy yeah um but the, there's a funny thing here that, that happened here. So I, so I started buying wine with Julian going back maybe like up six, six, eight weeks or sorry, six to eight months ago. And yeah. a lot of the wine was, was like a collection of somebody else. And Julian does a lot of business out of Geneva. So a lot of the wines were in Geneva. And then I bought some, some on premier wines and to, I would say, I would be talking with Julian, Julian and be like, Oh, your, your wines are at Joanne like J-O-A-N-N-E. And like, I never asked about it, but I, was, I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, <laughs> why the fuck are my wines with some lady named Joanne? Like, why aren't they, <laughs> why aren't they in like some bonded yeah. warehouse or whatever? And he would just yeah. keep saying, he's like, yeah, your wines are with Joanne. They'll, they'll be held there for a while. I'm like, okay. <laughs> At some point, <laughs> once I get to Bordeaux, I'm going to be asking Julian, like, who's Joanne? And why does she have my wines? Like, what if she dies? And then, and, what, and, whatever. And, 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 and then t- t- tell us when did you arrive? Joan is yeah. an amazing one mention, right? Oh yeah. my gosh. So this the whole time this is like been kind of bothering me. Like, all right, who's this Joanne character? So on yeah. the way, so the first place we're going is Joanne. And I'm like, all right, we're gonna like show up at some kind of like you know, ladies' house with a private like a like a couple of wine coolers or something or whatever. We show up, we show up at this like the biggest warehouse I think I've ever seen. It looked like an like an Amazon fulfillment center. And the whole ride there, I'm basically, I've never felt sicker in my life because one thing about 
Bordeaux that I hate is that it's just roundabouts every like 50 meters. It seems like <laughs> these massive roundabouts. So I'm, yeah. I'm hung over and I, my, I think it was something with a Pinot Noir that like just didn't agree with me, but I never felt sicker in my life. And I was like, at any second, I'm just going to vomit <laughs> like in the car. And then I was yeah. hoping I would, because then we show up to Joanne and I'm like, Oh my gosh. I started having like this anxiety attack, picturing myself, like walking in to this place on premieres tasting all like the yeah. wine critics, the biggest wine buyers, all the, the famous chateau owners and stuff. And here comes this idiot American who <laughs> just like walks huh? in and just barfs like front and center. Just pleating, just pleating out, <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I, we get out of the car and I look at Julia and I'm like, I can't go in there, man. He's like, come on, dude, we're late. Like we got to go in there. And, um, so I'm like, all right, I sneak off into the bush. <laughs> <laughs> like I myself basically try to try to gag myself to barf yeah. and I couldn't. And me, and, and me, I was trying to hide you from the people I knew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not to. Yeah. Hey, Julian, interesting. You come with your client. Uh, yeah, because uh, I mean, you have to understand that normally it's 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 it's, it's not authorized to any kind of uh, like uh, private people. It's only for professional. So it's just, that was a very special. Very that was a very special access for you to, to be able to, to do that. You know. Yeah. Uh, Im imagine if all the wine lovers of the world would like to test on Primera Joan. Uh, I mean, you know, like. Uh, Ima but <laughs> and I understood this, and so imagine the horror going through me, where I'm like, yeah. I I've I've never felt sicker in my life, but yet I can't. I for some reason I can't force it out, and I'm dizzy. I'm like, and and then I have to like, I have to be at my best because this is an industry that I, I'm in, very interested in. And it's like anyone who's had just like that horrible, unbearable hangover can probably imagine the terror that I was in, like having to go to this, like very, what I would regard as a very important, very exclusive meeting and event. Yeah but also yeah. where like you're trapped sort of inside. because I was looking at this warehouse. I'm like, there are no exits. Like once you're in there, like you're, yeah. you're like 200 meters to the outside. So it wasn't like I could just like jog 15 yards and <laughs> do a bush and kind of conceal it. So yeah. I was, I was having like a real bad, yeah. I was having basically terror about going inside. Finally we go in, no one's ever seen a warehouse. that looks as nice as this. It was like, it was like a, art gallery there's fine art everywhere there's chandeliers everywhere there's literally a red carpet that's like six feet long that goes on for like 200 meters we'll have to share a photo of that in the in the episode show notes but this place was like the most elegant place you've ever been and it's joanne so <laughs> that yeah. is joanne like so yeah. who is joanne julian i mean you understood that uh, that was a company name uh of uh, the grandmother of uh of um, a Pierre Antoine Cassel. I mean, basically, Joanne today is uh, the largest distributor uh, of fine wines uh, in the world mm -hmm. because uh, they are based in Bordeaux. It's 95% of the business in Bordeaux, but uh, they also they also concentrate and aggregate all the fine wines from all over the world except Burgundy because when you when you have, I mean, for 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 all the clients. To have a to have a trusted uh, uh, a supplier of fine wines that guarantees the provenance of the wines, the, the good storage, it's very good, you know. So basically, what happened is like uh, over the years, they got wine from from uh, from Spain, from Italy, from the U.S. Because when you are an importer in Taiwan, you're happy to have just one supplier and one logistic chain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on the price list, you have the Bordeaux, but you also have the fine wines of the world. So they developed an amazing catalog of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of wines. So basically what happened in Bordeaux is like, um, you understand that the Chateau don't sell their wines directly. I mean, first thing first, roughly 15% of the production of Bordeaux is fine wines, up to 50 euros. The other mm -hmm. ones is Bordeaux you can buy in the supermarkets or wherever. Mm -hmm. uh, we consider... The world of fine wines up to up to fifty euros. I mean, oh, higher world. higher than fifty, yeah, right? Yeah, up to fifty yep. euros. So, fifteen percent of the production is fifty euros. It's it's, it's already good, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, you have a classification in Bordeaux. You have the Grand Cru Classé from the left bank, and you have uh, the Grand Cru Classé from the right bank. So, the classification back to eighteen fifty five, and um, 
it's a classification of the, the left bank. And uh, of course, uh, I mean, when they started doing the business in Bordeaux, they needed to get a, a classification for people to understand what was the best quality of wine in different chateaux. So like on the left bank, you've got like a, a six classified growth, first classified growth, and like everybody knows Mouton Rothschild, Lafitte, La Tour, Margot, Aubryon, all these chateaux, which are, are the most expensive ones. And on the right bank, you have also uh, Cheval Blanc. Property. Cheval right. Blanc. Uh, so yeah, you have uh, what you call the, the right bank is, is very famous for Merlot, while mm -hmm. the left bank is was more famous for Cabernet. So, Cabernet. so but basically, like, uh, uh, yeah, Cheval Blanc is a, a Cheval Blanc, Ozone, uh, Angelus, Le Pain, they are on the right bank. What about yeah. Petrus? So, Where's Petrus? Petrus is in Pomerol. Yeah. That's left Pomerol. bank, right? No, that's right bank. It's, it's on the right, yeah, next to Saint Emilion, basically. Okay. Yeah, you've been to Saint Emilion as well. On another trip, yeah. Yeah. So, this is it. Um, yeah. Um, we, we, we belong to vintage as well. So, some vintage are great, some, some are not. 2021 is interesting. It's not an amazing vintage, but um, the technology around winemaking progressed so much for the past years that now it's, uh, it's complicated to do bad wines. I mean, mm -hmm. with the technology now, you manage to get like a standard of quality, which is very high. Um, the only thing we, 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 the only, I mean, there is just one major trouble in, 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 the, in the world of fine wines is the climate change. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I can tell you something like, uh, it's going to be very, very complex over the, over the next years to be able to produce wines below 13 degrees alcohol because uh, of the temperature and because of uh, the conditions. So that's why today there is like an appetite for, uh, what we call the altitude wines, like Alpine wines, like Swiss wines, or you know, Argentina, um, mm -hmm. because the higher you go and uh, the higher you can find freshness into the terroir and into the wines. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it might happen that in, in the course of the next 20 years, it's going to be very complicated to get quality wines, even in Spain, in South France, in Italy. Yeah. Which is, um, is that's going to put pressure on the on the supply and the demand's going to be increasing. This is kind of what I've been thinking for a while is like supply and demand dynamics really favor a higher a much higher higher price in the next yeah. you know <laughs> and, and every year ahead going forward basically because yeah it's well, the scarcity that's the scarcity you know uh, I mean that's why I, I I mean you know I've been trading fine wines for like uh, twenty years. And uh, for me, that was more interesting to to set up uh, my, my my investment vehicle because, honestly, if you ask me if I prefer to 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 charge like twenty percent margin straight away on my wines and trade it, or to be able to keep the stocks and to get like a five years control on my stock, mm -hmm. then over the years, because of the scarcity and because of the demand, I mean we double. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's uh, the, the market. I mean, uh, the market of fine wines in 2020 um, in the world. I mean, we talk about fine wines. Means, I mean, the world of fine wines is like mostly Bordeaux Burgundy. It's what we call the Livex 25. So mm -hmm. basically, there is an index which is able to measure it like uh, uh, the last trade, the last auction. So mm -hmm. we, we, we developed a very specific uh, evaluation method with uh, Ethan Young um, to be able to, to rate. Uh, each wine according like the vintage, according to the format, according to the, the I mean, according to the supply on the market. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's an index is called Livex. So you, it's 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 mostly Bordeaux and Burgundy wines, which are the top wines from Bordeaux, top wines from Burgundy, and also uh, a, a few from the Rhone Valley. We have also into it. We have a, a few Barolos, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the, the region in uh, in Italy, yeah. and of course we have a Screaming Migos and Opus One in um, in, uh, in in the US. So that's so, the that's the LiveX twenty five, and that that basically means LiveX twenty five is the twenty five most expensive bottles of wine in the world. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a British basically. It's um it's a British. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, it's been in the UK. Uh, I mean, it's it's a method to to, yeah, that's all the wines which are the most traded into the world, uh, and then you understand that um, 
the returns are very high uh, because uh, I mean the world is is getting is getting richer. <laughs> people mm-hmm. we have more and more people interested in wine. So at the end of the day, you know, like uh, uh, <laughs> producers, uh, uh, especially in Burgundy, raise the price every year because yeah. you always have like a, a new money coming in, new people into. I mean, and also in wine, we have. I mean, this is very different from the eighties and nineties. I mean, I'm forty five, as you know. Uh, I mean, I, I can I can see what I can see. All the consumer evolve, and now it's amazing. We have a community of young people drinking wine and having interest into it. That we didn't get in the 1890s, you know, it was like it. It, it used to be seen as a very, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, old school product. You know, like yeah. uh, you know, when you drink wine, uh, you're a daddy or you're a granddad, or you know, it was not cool. You know what I mean for for, yeah. for years, and yeah. now it's very very different. You know, uh, so anyway, it's it's clear that uh, fine wine investment has a lot going for it. And, yeah, uh, on on the subject of fine wine, so we. Going back to Joanne, we had, yeah, yeah. this was kind of the primary on premieres tasting. I think what it seems like is that a lot of the smaller chateaus that don't pull in the crowds, like that are not the live X 25 or not the 25 biggest labels. They, yeah. a lot, they send some of their products to Joanne for like a basically consolidated tasting. So you can go yeah. to Joanne and you can taste like, I don't know how many they had offered it over a hundred, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it, I mean, uh, as, I mean, normally you, 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 I mean, if you would go as a, as a, uh, I mean, we did, the, we did the speedway. Yeah, we stayed two days in Bordeaux because we had a lot to do. But normally, when you, when you take your time, you go to different areas and you test one from different areas and different chateaus. Mm-hmm. But what we did was a tasting in one place only where we concentrate all the samples. So for mm-hmm. us, that was a good opportunity in two hours time to discover. What was the region? I mean, you know, in Bordeaux, you have a right bank, left bank, but in the in, in the left bank, you have Pauillac, Saint Julien, Margaux, yeah. different appellation. And what we realized in 2021 is was like uh, the vintage is is not as good as 18, 19, 20, which is like uh, very rare. Three years in a row, we had amazing amazing vintage, but 2021 it, prices should 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 be slight should, should should be better. I mean, I, I think they're gonna they're gonna. So you think prices will come down? Yeah, yeah. Price, I mean, they have to, uh, not for the first growth because first growth they all, they always sell. But yeah, the, the other players uh, yeah. between uh, between twenty to hundred euros, they have to be very careful about the price strategy, because yeah. if if they price too high, it means that um, to keep doing the distribution, the negotiant or the merchant, that's me, we have to lower our margin to be able to to compete the market. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's. So- uh, so Every Julian's, year, that's always like, uh, yeah. So Julian's using some terms that listeners probably won't be familiar with, but basically in Bordeaux, the, t- correct me if I'm wrong, Julian, the vin- what the vineyards typically do is they make two red wines. Ones that are like primary, which they call the first grow. That's the real expensive yeah. one. And then they make another one that's that's cheaper in price. Still, yeah, still it's, good it's wine, good, but it's, it's good they call that second, second grow. Yeah, yeah, it's good second. And second, second wines are, are most of the time are very good value for money. So what yeah. happened is when 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 the chateau or winery um, have a, a, I mean they do the harvest, the quality is here, so they have a, an amount of wine. And when they do the blending, they're gonna choose between different qualities of wine or to blend mm-hmm. the the first the first wine. What is the picture? What is like uh, the structure? What is the percentage of uh, Cabernet Franc, Merlot? Uh, so that's that, that's that requires skills. Like yeah. uh, it's what you call analogy. That's what I, I that's what I graduated from. I mean, your ability is to understand how each bat is going to evolve over the years, mm-hmm. and how a Cabernet Franc can match a Merlot and in which proportions. And then once you do that, you keep. I mean, it's called a blend, and the blend of uh, is is the first is the first wine. It's the best quality. So basically, the other quality go on the second level, mm-hmm. which is for the second wine. But it's 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 made from the same property, you know. It's yeah, made from yeah, the same, same property. Terroir, so. I'm assuming, yeah, yeah. Man. but, but so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so we start. They, Joanne gave us like this book that has all the wines in it, and so we sit down at this tent inside the warehouse. There's all these private, basically tents that are tasting tents. I'm guessing for all the different clients uh that yeah. come in and, and taste everything and 
we, <laughs> I'm still looking for the exits. I'm dizzy. I, I, like we're in this big warehouse indoor. I don't see an exit anywhere. I'm dying. And then all of a sudden, like all these wines start coming out and they're coming fast. It's like, bang, 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 taste, spit, rinse your mouth, taste, spit, rinse your mouth. And they're coming fast. And I was like, I wonder how my body is going to react the first time wine touches my lips today. Like am I just going to immediately start yeah. projectile vomiting all over the table. And it's not just Julian and I, who was, who was working with us? Who was there with us? There was uh, Ellen, uh, which is my assistant. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it wouldn't have been and, the worst uh, thing in the world, but then there was like, four or five people at the Joanne staff that was tending to our tent. <laughs> yeah. And, and, then we, and then we ended up having a, having a lunch with the owner. Uh, yeah. with the... <laughs> okay. So this is when it got really interesting. So, then, so I started feeling better about 30 minutes in probably because I was tasting a couple of wines here and there, but I started feeling a little bit better. I'm like, all right, I think crisis averted. So then the, then the owner and like a couple of the main, like the main commercial director from Joanne. And I think one of their main, like, uh, negotiations, their sales kind of front of the line salespeople was there and they all sit down. So all of a sudden now there's seven or eight people at our table, including these like very prim and proper, uh, owners of Joanne. And then the, the plate of food comes out. <laughs> just like 10 things that I've never seen before and can't recognize. And so I'm surrounded by all of you guys talking and talking in French and, uh, and everyone's eating all their food. So I'm like, all right, this is sort of Russian roulette here. Like, what am I eating? <laughs> <laughs> and most things were pretty normal. I kind of just like held my breath and swallowed them, but my God, whatever that, that one square piece of red, uh, it was like red meat of something. It was a cube of red meat. Whatever that was, was the foulest thing I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> and immediately, you, I don't know what it was. I, I don't know. You, you didn't like it? No, it was horrible. I, like, it, was, it, was, it was duck, my friend. It was duck? It wasn't cooked? Yeah, yeah we don't cook duck. We oh, duck. It, it didn't taste like... Okay, so after I ate it, it was like everything I could cooked. do, to, Come on. whatever I could do to not, to not vomit in front on the table in front of everybody. But then I realized that like, even the, even Joanne owner wasn't eating his, he put his to the side. And one of the other guys put his to the side. I'm like, I'm an idiot. Like I should have waited. I should have followed everybody. Right. Cause surely if yeah. Joanne's owner is not eating it and he's like 85 years old, like yeah. I definitely shouldn't be eating it in my condition. Oh, he's uh, 65. Was, Come on. He's 65. I don't, I don't remember. I was, I was yeah. dizzy and di disillusioned, but, um, yeah. But anyway, that, that was, that was interesting because you, you, you can, uh, I mean, in two hours you discovered the quality of, uh, of the vintage and you discover like, uh, yeah. like, uh, all the regions. Yeah. 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 Well, no, did you, so my, t my takeaway was like, I, I, there was a couple that stood out that I remember I thought were pretty good, like Razan Segle, but, uh, but overall, like I, I couldn't tell the difference in, the gross majority of them because they're just no. it's too difficult to, to be honest with you I, I i i don't i don't make much difference too i mean mm -hmm. you 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 don't go there to get difference in between shots you get that to get the trend mm -hmm. when you do primer you taste the quality you taste uh, you of course each chateau will provide different uh, different i mean you you go you go there for the footprint you know what i mean like uh, uh what is the dna of the vintage uh and all the chateau did it you know why cabernet or Merlot? i mean over the years you develop an ability to understand what would be the wine in 5 10 20 20 years 30 yeah. years that's but it, it, it requires time and, and tastings and uh and a lot of tasting i mean you know we taste all the time i mean we, drink, we open bottles all, I mean, all year long. So you, you, we understand how the wine is evaluating, uh, and um, and yeah, that's an interesting vintage for sure. This week's sponsor of Invest Like a Boss is Composer. Now, I mentioned them at the top of the show, but I want to give you a little better picture about what they can actually achieve. Composer.trade is the premier platform for investing in quantitative strategies. Composer.trade is putting the power of quant in the hands of regular investors with their game-changing super app. All you have to do is pick an investment strategy. You can backtest it with their no-code tool 
tool and put the magic of quant to work in your portfolio. You don't have to code. You don't have to put anything in an Excel. None of that. Or you know what's even easier? They have pre-vetted strategies like buy the dips in NASDAQ. We know <laughs> there's been a lot of dips in NASDAQ lately, so that might come in handy. Or how about this one? Leverage sectors inflation hedge. There's a ton of pre-vetted strategies by their engineers that they have figured out all this stuff for you to make it super easy. If you want to learn more, just head over to composer.trade slash boss. That's composer trade slash boss. I'll even spell it out for you. Composer, C-O-M-P-O-S-E-R dot trade, T-R-A-D-E slash boss, B-O-S-S. Take the power of these quantitative hedge funds into your own hands. It's composer dot trade slash boss. See important disclaimers at composer dot trade slash disclaimer. Right, so that that was Joanne. What a what an experience! Uh, to always remember that, both for the, <laughs> the the near crisis averted, but also just like how many wines, uh, amazing wines we tasted. Some of my like favorite wines from Bordeaux we were able to taste, and it's so true. Like you taste twenty twenty one that hasn't been in oak yet, uh, hasn't been aged, compared to like say like a Ch- Chateau uh, Rosan Segle, which is like one that I've, I've tasted kind of like a 2000, totally different wine. <laughs> yeah. But going into the rest of the day, so we went to two other places at the end of that day. Uh, how do you call, pronounce it? Monton? Monton Rothschild? Mouton, yeah. I mean, the famous Chateau Mouton Rothschild. Yeah, sorry. Mouton Rothschild, which is a classified rose. Come on. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the most iconic wine. Mouton Rothschild, yeah. It'll take me 20 you, years you, to you, pronounce you, that right. Yeah. And also, yeah, so we, we've been there to taste uh, uh, all the wine from the from uh, from the from, from the chateau, Mouton Rothschild, but uh, also Armagnac uh, and, and a few others. Mm-hmm. And also, we've been to Chateau Palmer in Margot. So one person once told me uh, he he had like a big private cellar, like probably worth a million dollars, which is an American yeah. guy. And before I knew anything about wine, and I was like, "What are your two favorite wines?" And he said, uh, "Chateau Pavi and Chateau Palmer." Pavi, yeah. Pavi. Pavi is, is, is in Saint Emilion. Yeah. yeah. So and that's Palmer. the only thing I knew about Palmer, but we got to go there. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And you, you were like buddy buddies with the, the guy, some British guy. <laughs> that was a different yeah. tasting experience because he was more like, it wasn't so prim and proper. It was like friendly. We're kind of just hanging out back in the, in the yeah. aging room and shooting the shit. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Palmer, Palmer is it's it's a uh, you know th- th- that's very interesting uh, to for you to test Palmer because you know the classification has been made in 1855, and the only exception was uh, uh, was uh, I mean when they do the classification, uh, Mouton Rothschild was not classified on the first growth, mm-hmm. and everybody knew that the quality was the same. So I think after years and years and years, they managed to get back Chateau Mouton Rothschild into the classification of the first classified growth. Yeah, but otherwise, other than that, on the left bank, the classification never moved. But in in, in more than two hundred years now, I mean, the quality of uh, the wines evolve, the climate change, and some some wineries are classified second or third, and some are classified fourth or fifth, and now they deserve to be two or third. You know, so yeah. but but it can't be changed. And Palma is the exact picture of like. A, a growth which should be that should be i mean it's price the same as as, uh, as mouton I mean, not mouton maybe uh, like a second you know it's the same quality of lascas for example you know yeah it's a, it's a margot but it's a, the quality is amazing you know when you have like some other circuit side growth which are sold for 60 euros <laughs> that's that's the, the magic of. I mean, that, that's that's why I, I can understand some people are confused about wine because yeah. the situation is complicated, vintage is complicated, you know, and uh, yeah. that's why that's why I, I I end up being an advisor for many of my clients to to make, especially when you start to make a collection. Uh, I mean, you need to get a strategy, you know, like uh, yeah. what to buy, what you to buy, what can what what, what provenance to buy. You, you have to be very careful because you can be played off otherwise yeah. i mean yeah. now the now the market you, you you can find fakes you can find lots of different wines which are that's the biggest thing that i think people are like stuck on is like how do you 
how do you avoid yeah. that from the from, uh, you, uh, sour you avoid that uh, paying the right price the right price is not the right price is getting never it, the cheapest yeah or getting <laughs> it straight from the chateau right like that's why i like on premieres but this this was funny because when we were at palmer so like <laughs> julian's doing like julian's doing his little business and hustle every at every place we went which is mostly in the form of like Hey, it'd be great to increase my allocation this year. Cause it seems like it's always, that's always like the hustle, right? Is like trying to get more allocation from the Chateau because you can turn around and resell that at a profit and you're kind of the front front lines and the gatekeeper of getting that supply. But it was funny. Cause like in this year, 2021 supply was crushed because of a lot of uh, like mold and fruit frost and stuff. So everyone's fighting for more allocation, but everyone's like, sorry, actually you're getting less allocation this year. <laughs> Yeah. Not more, buddy. Yeah. Uh, name, uh, name of the game. Just, just Aubryon was, a, yeah, but on the next day, we end up uh, with, uh, with the, I mean, honestly, you, you had amazing time. You had like uh, Palmer uh, and, uh, and the Mouton, and then we tasted as well in the Domaine de Chevalier and in uh, Chateau Aubryon, where we oh. had mi- yeah. Mission, Mission in Aubryon. But yeah, we, yeah, we can talk about that so for any of the other non uh the non-french speakers out there it's pronounced hot brion <laughs> yeah <laughs> but in french o- o- sounds Aubryon, nothing yeah. sounds nothing similar yeah, right yeah yeah so, so that Aub- they're considered Aubryon one of the top yeah, yeah. Are they considered I mean, yeah. one of the top five in in bordeaux uh, so yeah the aubryon is classified and then you have la mission aubryon which is uh I mean, which is a property which is, which is just in front of Aubryon. And um, yeah, Aubryon is, uh, I mean, to me, Aubryon, I mean, yeah, to, to me, Aubryon is, is, is my favorite. I mean, to be honest Number with one. You. Yeah, to, to me, yeah. Um, I'll have to chase something that's 30 years old because that uh, 2021 stuff was unpalatable. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, and also they produce white wines you remember you, oh, the we whites taste. were good the whites you could yeah. pretty much drink right away like I was actually I was spitting out the reds which is the first time I've ever done that in my life but the whites I was actually people were spitting out the whites I was actually drinking the whites <laughs> Yeah. I don't yeah, need no it's, oak. It's, 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 that was an embarrassment for me. You know, like everybody was looking at you, like, who's this guy? Swallow. I mean, I mean you, you, you were tasting the wine in, 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 in no order. So, you, 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 you were not, so wow. Like, uh, I needed a coaching. <laughs> I, I, I coached you. I said, just look at me. Look at what I do and look at what I taste. I take my time, you know, and uh, yeah. By the time we got to Aubryon, you, you see, it was you, like, you, I was so... You see, was, like, uh, you see you, 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 when you taste like this, you need, you, you need to be in silence, you know? That's I, why. Was in, I was in silence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how I learned how to taste wine, because of the James yeah. Suckling mastermind, or masterclass. Master it's like, master, yeah. swish it in your mouth, <laughs> blow air over yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next time, twenty twenty three. I'll be. I'll be sharper. <laughs> I want I, I need to go back to on premiere with with. It's crazy uh, when you think about uh, American guys have been so powerful in the in the in the, in the field of fine wines. I mean, Parker, Robert Parker rules Bordeaux for twenty years because his way to scale the note on hundred was unparalleled. Mm-hmm. So basically, when you get an, an, up to ninety, you enter the world of fine wines. Ninety to ninety-five, everybody compete here. I mean, up to ninety-five, you have a, like a very few players, and uh, the graal is to get an hundred Parker, yeah. like Pavie to Pavie two thousand, hundred Parker. You know, like this kind of iconic vintage. But that was for the American market because. I mean, the U.S. used to buy a lot of wine, like, back. they still do, actually. So the style of wine in Bordeaux for a long time was very oaky, very deep, yeah. very strong. And to be honest with you, that's not where the world goes. Mm-hmm. So today, what we call the Parker-style wines are not that fashion anymore. People look for freshness. and uh, But yeah, and uh, then happened the James Suckling, which is an American guy, journalist, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, and yeah, and, and James, I mean, I know him personally, he's, 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 a, very, he's, he's a great journalist, but mm-hmm. he, he tests super well too. He's mm-hmm. very much in Tuscany as well. I mean, yeah, you, you, in the US, you have good guys in the wine. 
I was, when I watched the James Suckling masterclass, I think that was actually what made me want to get involved in the industry. I was like, look at this guy. Yeah. Okay. He's like, just a, kind of your average dude. He's got this beautiful house in Tuscany and these world-class vineyards all around the world to ship him bottles of their, of their wine every single day. He's got this incredible like cellar, but he's got this tasting room at his house where he's got like too many bottles to go through. And it's just like he and his son and they're just sitting around all day in Tuscany, hanging out, tasting wines. I'm like, oh gosh, man, this guy's created quite a life for himself. Yeah. Real quick, the pricing. So this is what I want to understand with the pricing. Because when we were at Joanne, I was looking at, they have the last year's price of the of the wines and so what really caught my mind i was like looking at these the pricing it was like prc 20 yeah. which is like the price of 20 and it's like 40 euros 20 euros chateau razon segle which i love 66 euros and i'm like wait 66 yeah, yeah. euros that's, that's my that's my purchase price buddy and you're yeah. not supposed to see that you know yeah that was a, that was a professional tasting you know yeah so right. basically basically people don't see that price. The price, basically, the margin for a merchant is roughly seventeen to twenty percent. Okay, so it goes goes it goes to it goes from like say the chateau to the negociants, which are like the French families or whatever that have been in the industry for a while, and they they work directly with chateaus. Then it goes to distributors or like retailers, yeah. right? From there. Yeah, it's called, it's, it's, called, it's, it's called the Bordeaux marketplace. It's very specific to Bordeaux. There is no exclusivities. What happened is the Chateau releases the wine mm -hmm. and you have brokers, historical brokers. The brokers allow allocation to different wine merchants called Negociant. Negociant will be able to purchase that amount of uh, wine per broker. The broker is Bordeaux is very important because when you are Negociant and for any reason you can't sell the wine, you can give your stock back to a broker and the broker put it on the marketplace, mm -hmm. which means basically, let's say you have a stock and you can't, you can't get rid of it because you don't have the client or because for any reasons you can't sell, you always have an exit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is, this is very proper to Bordeaux. In Burgundy, it's very different. Burgundy, it's a very low, 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 low quantity. So each winery has its own merchant and sell directly to the merchant and do allocations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So by the time it gets to someone who actually wants to buy it, to drink it, like a normal retail consumer, the price can already be like up twice, two times from the price that the Chateau releases it, right? Yeah. Or even more, like in Burgundy's case, it could be like 10 times or something. More than that. <laughs> yeah. So the, the second night, that's actually a good example, because the second night we went out to dinner with your buddy Arnold again, and he was like, hey, you know, we had some really good wines last night, but you got to really try a good one tonight. So we yeah. had, we had a wine from Burgundy and he was saying like, Hey, this, this is like the cheapest I mean, price in the world. You can buy it because yeah. it's at a restaurant in Bordeaux. And this restaurant wants to sell this wine at a good price because yeah. they want the customers to be happy with their experience. So basically, basically that's it. What happened is um, when you, when you produce amazing wines, the, be, the, the best way to promote it is to be able, is to be able to give an access to it. Yeah. So the restaurants in France, in Paris, in Bordeaux, in Lyon, which are known as Michelin star. So sometimes just because they have a great wine list, they, 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 they allow like uh, the wine to be at a price which is decent. But honestly, the wine we had, the Musigny we had, I mean, we can talk a lot about that, but you know, right, that was another world. You, you got it right. Like, yeah, the, the, you, you can. You, I mean, it was such a, an amazing, like, tasting. Like, you know, the, the way the, the way it comes to your mouth, the attack, like uh, attack evolution, perfect, very straight, aromas defined. I mean, uh, what wow. was it called again? Moosey, Moosey, Moosey. It was yeah. I mean, we we had the Moosey. Musini uh, 09, yes. Musini uh, 09. Musini 09. How much? And yeah. that, I think at the restaurant was like something like 1,200, 1,400 yeah. euros. But uh, Arno, Arno was saying, is it like if you bought it outside the market or on the, like a the live marketplace, it would be like 4,000 or something? Yeah. That's, yeah. Much of the time. Um, yeah. Well, that was a good experience. Thanks, Julian. Appreciate it. Does that yeah. mean I have to buy more wine from you this year? <laughs> I mean, I think you should. 
you know, I, I definitely <laughs> I will. Keep, we keep it, keep it in, keep it in thermal control cellar. We don't touch it. And uh, yeah, one day you'll be super happy to get uh, to get this wine. And uh, when you have a look back, you say, "Okay, I paid I paid such a good price for one half today." Because I don't know what's going to happen with this world of NFTs, crypto, and and inflation, and so I mean, like we, we live in such a complicated world. But what I can tell you is um, that's it. You know, when you invest in wine. It's a, it's a passion. It's a passion investment. It, it doesn't. It will never return that, like your high risk, your crypto stuff, and so on. But it's been. It's it's it's, it's very interesting. Over the years, I mean, you have no volatility. Well, my if portfolio you get, uh, is up like uh, 12, 13 percent over the last year, and all my metaverse stocks are down like sixty percent. So, it's a good hedge against <laughs> some of the higher risk stuff I'm doing. And I'm like, you know what? It. If we end up in World War Three. I'm going to head to Bordeaux. I'm going to call up Julian. I'm going to say, Julian, it's time to open up the warehouse. <laughs> yeah. And, time and, to start and, drinking, yeah. drinking down the yeah. supply. <laughs> like yeah, legitimately, that's, that's kind of like my, my plan. See if the world really goes to crap. It's like I've got 500 bottles sitting in Bordeaux. <laughs> Not all of them are ready yeah. to drink, but they'll all be good enough. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. All right. No, so you got, it. so you've been yeah. helping me buy, um, I guess what, what's been pretty cool is like you've got access to you focus on LiveX 25, which we've already said is the top 25 biggest um, or most reputable, most expensive brands of Bordeaux, Burgundy yeah. for the most part. So you've been helping me acquire some of these labels that I'm like, I'd never be able to get my hands on. I think you just helped me get Chateau Latour, uh, a few cases of that. Lafitte, Mouton, Lafitte, Mouton, Pavi, Palmer. Palmer. Pavi, yeah, you got them, yeah. 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 So but you that's, know, you know what? what? You know that, that, that's what's interesting because basically for 2019, when we met, you say, Junior, I want to buy on Primer because I feel secure about Primer and so on. And, and, and 18, 19, 20 were like amazing vintage. I was sold out in a minute, you know? Yeah. But the good thing is like uh, during COVID, I got this investor and he didn't understand about the wine and for him he needed cash immediately so he called me and he said even if i don't make money i want to exit the wine because i need the cash for something else mm -hmm. that's why you were able to buy that seller at a very decent price you know yeah but i mean you you 2019 already jumped 25 percent, my friend you know like uh it's gonna be twenty yeah. years before I can drink that. So I'll just uh, no, no, you can you can drink. No, what we do. We, we make money off that stuff, and then we take the money from that stuff, and we go to like a cool restaurant, and you, you spend a lot of time in Dubai or a lot of time in uh, Bordeaux. We, get, we meet a place like there and have like one of those good dinners. We just buy, use the cash to buy something that's ready to drink. I think that's the yeah. way to do it. Yeah, that's 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 your strategy, you know. And that's it. I, I have some clients. They they, they they like to drink the performance. You know, mm -hmm. I have some. Uh, I have some of those. They like to drink everything. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to lean uh, towards that direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, All right, uh, so Julian, tell us real quick about you. Just set up a fund that is different than your kind of standard or historic business of kind of wine trading and helping people set up private sellers. You want to tell us about the the fund and how it works? Yeah, I mean, to, in, in a nutshell, what we do is um, we, we, we work as a family office. I mean, to be honest with you, it's very, very, very complicated to source the right wine at the right price. So we focus only on the top 25. We invest roughly 10 million per year, and we are happy with 10. I could go up to my competitors to 200, but honestly, if you want to end up with a portfolio of amazing wines, we get value over the years, you need to invest in this live X25. My mm -hmm. competitors get you some portfolios of Barolos and one bottle of Petrus, and the performance is okay, but it will never be the one we had. So what we believe is um, there is a space for us to get uh, this uh, kind of great business where we have access to amazing collections of wine through successions, mm -hmm. through the market. I do the curation of each collection for my clients. We work on a strategy. We focus on the strategy for five years and you invest for five years with, with us. In five years, what we do is uh, we, instead of mark, mark up like uh, 15, 20% as our pizzas, we, we mark up 3% brokerage fees and uh, we charge 2% of management fees 
every year to be able to pay for like uh, um, storage insurance and so on. Yeah. And then after five years, we, we, I mean, we get a carry of 20% of the performance. That's it. So, so I think, I think this is really, this took me a while to understand this. And I think this is important part to. You understand that's not a fund. It's, 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 we, we do, we, we, we work as an advisor. It's yeah. advisory. We, we do a managed account. You own yeah. the wine. You, there is a transfer of, there is a transfer of property. You, you access the wine. We, as advisor, we keep the wine in our storage and we have a contract with you, which is mm -hmm. a Swiss law contract, where basically we keep the wine with our management. Yeah. And after Where's, five years. Where, where do you yeah. keep most of the wine in Geneva? Yeah, we keep all the wine to investment in the Geneva Freeport, which is Got the it. most secret place of the world. You know, it's a, the, the wine is parked next to Mona Lisa and all the, like, uh, oh my the, gosh. The, yeah, yeah, you know, like, uh, I got to come check this out. This will be the next place yeah. on the trip on the list. Yeah, you know, it's, it, 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 it sounds impressive, it's, but it's not really, you know, it's, no, it's, it's not it's like Joanne. No, it's not, it's, yeah, you know, it's just, a, it's just a storage place, you know. Well, I, I studied yeah. it outside of Geneva for like when I was in college for six weeks, but it, I, I always loved that part of the world. Super cool, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so uh, how do you, because I want to go back to the pricing you, because, because you, I think you, this you, is an important you, part. You, you understand that we keep the wine inbound. Inbound means uh, it's a tax suspended. So yeah. basically, uh, when we ship the wine from the winery uh, to our storage inbound, um, you don't pay tax. We don't pay tax on that, and then you you pay the tax according to the country of uh, of destination. But so you don't actually. That, uh, but but an investor doesn't have to pay the like if if you no. you get the you get the wine tax free. You hold it in you hold it in storage. I invest yeah. with you. Yeah. I don't have to pay the tax, and when I sell it, I don't have to pay the the VAT no. only if someone uh, wants it like for their consumption or for their retail shop yeah. in a different country, then they have to pay the tax. Right. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, the wise investment at some point, uh, we have to, we have to exist. I mean, if you want to, if you want to, after five years, if you want to get your wine, you can, you can, you, I mean, you, you, you cannot, you know, that, you understand that that's a, that's yeah. a, a, a performance, but if you want to buy, as a, if you want to purchase back your wine after five years, you, you can do, but you, you have to pay the premium. That's it. Yeah, got it. Okay, yeah. so you so your your fee structure is two percent annual management fee plus twenty percent carry. And yeah. who who do you consider your competitors? I mean, today on the market, we have. Uh, I mean, you have Bordeaux Index in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, this company called Cult Wines. Uh, but they work on tickets of uh, 10, 20, 30,000, which is not mm -hmm. my case. Uh, mm -hmm. Normally, we start having investors around 250,000. But um, that's a lot less than I have with you, or that's a lot yeah, more than I have with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you, you didn't uh, purchase uh, as uh, I mean, started together. You, I mean, that was for me. That was trading. That was not investment. Yeah. Okay. You know? Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. But right, 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 right. Uh, yeah, today you, today you asked me to get the wine management because you want to be able to to get a storage and insurance. So we're gonna move the stock to 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 uh, asset management st uh, structure. But otherwise, you know, the idea is to get people understanding uh, 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 wine. So if they want to invest fifty or hundred, but they do it every year, we have I'm fine with it. You know, mm -hmm. basically we have a one to one contract. It's an agreement, very simple agreement, Swiss law, four pages. It defines like um, how we keep the wine, uh, and uh, and uh, it's I mean it's a, it's a, it's a proper regular business, you know. Our company is based in Geneva. We have uh, two hundred thousand Swiss francs of capital. We exist. I mean, as an advisor, we we own a place where we do trading. But your your stock is is a, is is not mine. I mean, your stock is at mine, but you own it. If mm -hmm. anything happened to us, you can keep the, you, you you have the property. I mean. That's it. You, you get it, right? Yeah. Still want to check out Geneva. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good man. You should come. To see, you should. You should come to see me next week. I'm, I'm gonna be there. Yeah. I can't believe you went straight from Bordeaux to London. I would have. I would have died. <laughs> no, I saw, <laughs> way I, too I, much. I, 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 I passed by Paris for a wedding first. Oh yeah, where you had to go and drink and taste more wines and probably be on your best performance and then go to London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no. By the way, uh, if you're around, uh, I wish I could take you to Le Valais. Le Valais is a is a, is a region in uh, in uh, in Switzerland. 
where they produce uh, amazing wines. It's next to Verbier. Um, and actually, now you have a few of fine wines. I mean, of course, we don't compete in, uh, in, in, the, first, in, in the first 25 brands of the world, but you should come. It's very interesting. They, they produce amazing Pinot Noir, the, the, the Shiraz, it's altitude wines. Yeah. They do this. Uh, yeah, you should come. Man, come any, any excuse to come to Switzerland? I'm there. Yeah, come next weekend. I'm going to be there. Uh, oh, sorry, buddy. I'll be in Tuscany. <laughs> uh, you, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned you mentioned you you go with your family in Tuscany. Uh, it sounds so spoiled. Yeah, no, I'm actually I'm heading off uh, tomorrow. Do a two or three days in Montal Montalcino, where they make the Montalcino. Mondello. Montalcino. Yeah, yeah, Montalcino, and then um, I guess over to. Are you leaving tomorrow? Yeah. Great. Yeah. And you stay, you stay there for the week. Stay like doing ten days in Tuscany. Ten days in Tuscany. Oh, ten wow. days in Tuscany. I don't know anything Thank about goodness. Tuscan wine, so I'm, I'm using this year to learn about all the European wines. So, someone try to, to someone arrange your trip, or you need some tips to go there. Um, I don't have much set up. No, I've got like I've got one really good one set up in in the what, what's like the, the the most famous one in like Tuscany in Toro in Tori. Uh, Sicilia? No, not Sicilia. I've had Sicilia. No, I'm going to look it up. On the Raya. Anyway. Okay. One second. Good. Good, good, good. That's what's cool. Listen. Um, All right. Well, well, while I'm looking it up, tell, tell everyone where they can find more about Volume Wines and, and your wine investment fund. And if they want to contact you, how people can contact you. Um, I mean, I guess we can put a link. Uh, I mean, my, my website is called volumewines.com. Um, my name is Julien Angevin, so you can contact me on LinkedIn as well. And um, uh, my email, I mean, maybe you can write it or maybe we can edit it. It's, uh, to make it simple, it's uh, Julien Angevin at gmail.com. Um, and information about, uh, we, 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 ha we have a brochure where we, we explain how we work. So we can, I can send a link to anybody who's interested in, uh, in doing some more investment for sure. Love it. Okay. I just found it. It's called Antini Ori, A N T I N O R I. Ah, it's Antinori. Antinori. Yeah. 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 Antinori. The, the seller is turning. You're going to, you, I mean, you're going to, you're going to see it's crazy. The, the, wine? The, the wine are cool, but honestly, the setup of the winery is insane. Okay. You, you, yeah. You're going to love it. But All right. Once you're there, once you're there, maybe I, I will, I will, uh, I will call a few friends and I will try to arrange something. You? Ooh, all right. Well, I'll be with like my parents and my sister, brother-in-law and niece. So maybe like just, yeah, but I mean, just for if, one, if, just for one, just for one. I'll be yeah, like, yeah, Hey guys, I gotta, I gotta bounce. You, but you have to, you have to, <laughs> you have to permit me to behave and not to split everywhere. You know, like, oh, uh, I'll, I'll go by myself. I, I definitely can't take my sister. She'll be way out of line. Okay. 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 <laughs> right. All right, Julian, it's been fun. And thanks so much for uh, hosting me at on premieres, man. Awesome event. Hopefully this was educational to everybody else and a little bit of fun, but uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure we'll have it's it's, episodes in the future as well. Yeah. But it's always great pleasure to, to share my passion and to see like uh, how much you've been involved and, you know, like to, to be able to see your face for this glass, for this first glass of, of, of Burgundy, you, you, you are like, uh, like, uh, like you, you look like at the child's eyes, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, and, and that's what I like to see in, in the eyes of my friends and my, my clients to say, wow, what happening here, you know? And uh, that's why, and uh, that's why, that's why it's, it's, it's an amazing world. Um, yeah. I, get, I, I totally buy the hype about Burgundy now, completely. I was like, what is yeah. this Pinot Noir everyone's excited about? But I totally get it. I mean, yeah. 5,000 euros a bottle. I don't know if I'm participating in that very often, but I can, I can certainly see how it'd be a, a something for a big celebration to get excited about. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you, Julian. Right. Thank you. All right, bosses. I hope you enjoyed that episode. It's now 4 p.m. Barcelona local time. I'm not drinking wine yet, but no promises for what happens in the next few hours. <laughs> I can't tell you how much that I've enjoyed diving into the world of fine wine, including the investing part. And one thing that really 
came out <laughs> that I realized at the at the event on premieres, specifically with the Chateau owners, is they do not love the idea of wine investing or wine finance per se. They much prefer that their wines get out into people's hands for them to be enjoyed without speculation driving prices higher and higher, uh, which has definitely happened in the last few years. Just that example of what Julian and I had to drink on the second night, that wine gets released around 500 or 600 euros, which is already astonishingly high. It's available in Bordeaux at select restaurants for 1,500 euros. But by the time it gets out of there and onto the, the wine trader and retail stores around you, it's a 4,000 euro bottle. So out of reach for most people. And Chateau owners really don't like this. They want their wines to get out there and be enjoyed and appreciated for the art that they are. So note to myself, <laughs> I am not purely a wine investor. I am setting up a private seller. That is definitely the memo to carry if you are wine investing and you happen to be going to wine events or uh, visiting chateaus around the world, I think it's better to say you're a wine collector or wine enthusiast, but not purely a wine investor. But hey, the investment returns are there. As you can see, I think it's a great alternative investment, it hedges against some of my higher risk stuff, and it's uncorrelated to the stock market. Oh yeah, uh, you can also enjoy the investment, which is kind of rare in investing outside of property. So I love it. I'm going to continue doing it and uh, looking forward to, to enjoying some of the, the bottles along the way as well. So did you guys enjoy this episode format? We know that everyone seems to enjoy the co-host commentary on both sides of the interview that we normally do, but we wanted to try out a new format that is frankly easier and allows us to continue the weekly episodes without such kind of a time-consuming format that we've always historically done. But anyways, love it, hate it, or if you just tolerate it, please let us know, share your thoughts. A quick shout out to our 200 amazing Patreons that support the production cost of the show. If you like Invest Like a Boss, you can become a Patreon and support us for as little as $5 a month. And there's some great perks along with it. We'll leave a link to join Patreon in the show notes. But guys, if you're not ready to join Patreon, you can help us big time by just taking two minutes to leave us a five-star review or a like or a nice comment wherever you listened to this episode. And sharing it with friends is huge. Our goal this year is to double our listener base. And the best way for that to happen is word of mouth, specifically your mouth. That's all I got, guys. Again, I hope you enjoyed these back-to-back -back episodes on, on premieres. Did I say it right? Finally, an incredible event taking place in Bordeaux each year. But for now, we promise we'll back off the wine stuff. Catch you all next week. Thanks for listening to the Best Like a Boss podcast. Join our mailing list at investlikeaboss.com to get exclusive access to our insider investment portfolios and our private members forum. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. Tell your friends and leave us a review in the iTunes store. It helps more than you know. See you guys next week.